In this video, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of a fix and flip going through the numbers of how you would think about the deal and analyze it. So let's just take an example neighborhood you've picked in your local real estate market where homes typically sell for $250,000 when they're in good shape, meaning they've already had some renovations maybe, or they don't look like they're deteriorated and run down. So this would be the after repair value, the ARV. So again, we're assuming the home's already been renovated, fixed up. We think top dollar we could get in this neighborhood is about 250,000. So knowing that this is our end price that we're gonna sell the property at 250, we now can go walk backwards from this number to figure out what we need to offer on the purchase side, what we need to purchase the property for in order to make the fix and flip work so that we can walk away with a healthy profit on the deal. So starting with that 250, we're gonna subtract out our estimated closing costs. So when we go to sell the property down the road at 250, we're gonna pay probably a 6% real estate commission. So doing the math roughly here, we're probably looking at about $15,000 in commissions. So we can take that off the 250, leaving us with 235. Now we're also gonna have about another 2,000 in closing costs to cover the title company fees, title insurance, and any other costs that we have to pay out at closing. So now this is gonna to come to about 233 if we take off an additional two grand. Next, to keep math pretty simple, let's just assume that we've come up with a renovation budget, looking at the property, analyzing everything we need to do to it to fix it up and get it ready to sell, and we came up with a renovation budget of $30,000. Now we're also gonna add a 10% bonus margin on top of that. So we can cover anything unexpected that might pop up. So 10% of that $30,000 is $3,000. So combining these two together, we now have a rough estimated renovation budget of 33 grand. So taking this 33,000 off our 233 number, we're now at 200,000. Going off this 200,000 number, let's say we assume that we wanna make at least $25,000 profit. So this we can back off now, giving us 175 as our potential purchase price. Now we can't forget that when we buy the property, we're gonna have some upfront closing costs on the buy side as well. We're gonna have lender fees if we're taking out a mortgage, such as the appraisal, the loan origination fee that we're paying to the lender. We're gonna have inspections done, and we might have some additional expenses at closing, like closing costs to the title company. So let's take off another two grand in closing costs when we buy the property. So this takes our 175 number down to 173. So you might think we're done at this point and we can go ahead and offer 173,000 in order to make all these numbers work, but there's one other expense you often forget to factor in and that's holding costs. Holding costs are gonna be the property taxes, the property insurance, the mortgage payments, utilities. These are ongoing expenses that you're paying while you're fixing and flipping the home. So let's just assume that our mortgage payment and our utilities are gonna add up over six months to another $10,000. So now we can back 10,000 off that 173 number, and this is gonna give us 163. So now we've worked our way down to a purchase price of 163,000. This is how much we need to offer at the maximum in order to be able to buy this property spend all this money on it, and be able to walk away with a $25,000 profit if we sell it at 250. Now we can try to work that number down even further to try to build in some buffer in case more things come up we don't expect, or in case we wanna up that profit even more if we'd rather make 30 or 35 or 40,000 in profit on it. So you can see how you can kind of work the numbers backwards from our sale price of 250 to come up with what potential purchase price we need to offer to make the numbers make sense and to be able to walk away with a profit. So that's how I would analyze a fix and flip deal. So now that I know I need to be roughly around that 160 number, I can watch the market in this neighborhood and see if any homes ever come up around this number. And if I notice that there's one that maybe comes up at 190 that looks like it needs some work, maybe there's a way I can talk the seller down and get them down to 160. Even though it might seem like a long shot, you never know what could really be wrong with the property. The seller might even be willing to come down lower because they realize that there's some major issues with the property. So again, think creatively how to walk all these numbers out of the sale price to be able to get down to a realistic purchase price for an investor for it to make sense. And if it seems like it's too low for it to work out, 
then maybe you need to start targeting some other neighborhoods as well because maybe this neighborhood, it's just unrealistic to ever see a home come at that cheap of a price. But a typical rule of thumb I like to use is to roughly give a purchase price of 60% of the ARV. I even try to get down as low as 50% of the ARV. So for example, on a $250,000 house, you know, 60% would be a $150,000 purchase price. And if I took it down to a 50% of the ARV, that would put us down at 125 as that's half of 250. So that's a quick rule of thumb. If you figure out what the ARV is, what you could sell the property for, figure out your purchase price to be roughly 50 to 60% of that number so that you can build in a good 40% buffer to cover all of your costs of flipping, holding the property, closing costs, and your profit that you need to factor in. All right, that's it for this video on how to analyze and go through some numbers on a fix and flip.